Go. So, Malagir, this guy is thick. Like you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you try to be obtuse at first. And not picking up what you're laying down. Um, so, um, what what Malagir? After we figured out all the um, things, uh, Malagir is going to start uh, telling a story slash set of basically set of limericks that will hopefully with my what ended up being a 24 deception roll will uh lead him to the conclusion like he totally thought of it himself there once yeah so, some sort of you know, was a man <laughs> on a boat i'll figure this out by the end of the episode and he had a exactly. friend who owned a goat he, he did it he, it's I mean, a mule it's a mule but <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, it's a, a set of limericks that lead him to going. Maybe if I do that similar, that oddly specifically similar thing to my situation, maybe it'll work out good for me too. It it takes you a while, and not because of any 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 fault on your part. Um, in fact, you kind of congratulate yourself because you come up with between three and four metaphors that are amazing. And he just doesn't get it. <laughs> um, He's supposed to be smart, but and then Ooh. and then finally, f- f- finally, you just you just say something something dumb and to the point. Like, man, too bad we can't use all that copper going in the water, man. Too bad. It sucks that barrels sink. And he's like, barrels don't sink. <laughs> 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 and uh, you uh, <laughs> so so he um. With uh, with some with some help, they he, uh, he manages to retrofit the uh, the machine and throws it in the water. And um, there's a tense couple of minutes that you guys can be in a checking on a mule daring, and then he he pulls it up and um, yeah, the captain takes a swig and he goes, shit, it's not booze, <laughs> it's not booze. <laughs> and um, yeah. so it's safe to drink then. Absolutely. And then there's a. A couple of the deckhands around have a noticeable shoulder drop, and um, <laughs> um, and if there was some sort of uh, measurable quantifier measure of favor, you would feel like that your favor with the captain had gone up several ticks if such a thing existed. Yeah. Is it enough yes. ticks to be in a cabin? Um, I mean, I can do some entertaining for us, and I can get my I can get a cabin. Wink, wink. All right. Not so that kind of the answer to your first question is: Were there a cabin available? That would be the case, but there is not. And the answer to your second point out is that human beings like music, and someone is willing to share their cabin with uh, three people, um, four people. I forgot about those. Um, I, I feel like I might be stretching uh, the the limits of one's hospitality. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll no, sleep no, no, outside. I'll, it's I'll fine. insist. I insist. I insist. Or so as as, as you speak, shoot. So the, the the captain thinks for a moment when you guys uh, bring up uh, not horrible sweating environments, and goes, "Well, you know, I mean, there was that uh, there was this guy who's been complaining about boredom for the last twenty minutes, and he rented my cabin." You at that point you realize that um, there's a bunch of improvised bedding all over the deck, and um, half of the crew is sleeping in it. Oh. Jeez. Oh, they they literally rented out every bit of sleepable ground on this boat to the anyway. Anyway, you yeah, guys, like somebody uh, did math the, to figure the out of your trip can enjoy the company of a the bourgeoisiest man you have ever met. <laughs> um, oh, good. You he his company is almost so bad that you would prefer the steerage. It's just that he's the he's the fifth son of a of a noble that you are eight times more familiar with the family history of than you ever wanted to be. Um, you know the cousins that don't like him. Um, you know why the reasons are bullshit. Um, the only thing that makes him shut up is eventually he decides that he just wants to listen to the music. And at that point, the silence in the air between refrains is the sweetest music you have heard because this man's voice. I'm a little distracted by his, uh, <laughs> his... Likeability? Yes. Yeah. An eight performance roll is still miles above what we were subjected to listening to him prattle on, so... 
think we're all right. Somewhere around eight quarters of magnitude larger. <laughs> it's because she's just like, she's trying to like pan flute blow, but like we keep hitting waves in the sea and it's just like, <laughs> it's like a slide whistle every time they go over a big wave. Later that night, there's a, um, there's a jarring moment that kind of, um, where you feel the entire ship move under you. Um, it, it's about the point where you guys would have been going to sleep, but, um, and you hear this loud snap, and the entire ship lurches forward. Um, uh, is this supposed to happen? That sounds I, bad. I don't, bad. I don't think so. Um, and, and then there's no more movement. It's just, did we hit something? I, I'm going outside. So I'm following. This cabin is so nice. It's an, it's. An, I'm not getting left alone with that guy. And it, the, the cabin is uh, so nice. It's in the rear of the boat, and there's there's a portholes in the back of it. Oh, even better. And now see the mist swirling around the back of the boat. No, oh, mind, not better. No, we no, need to get swirling. on deck. So it, it's like a there's a wake behind the boat. Why would we go on deck when the mist is rolling in? Because. I think that I'm better equipped to take care of whatever's in there than the poor sods up above decks that are sleeping there. Oh, oh, they are asleep though. No, you're right. We, we, yes, yes. At least to get them in shelter. He, right. He he sticks his hand like to the elbow in the bag, which seems like slightly like the bag shouldn't have that much depth to it, and he kind of fiddles around and like pulls out a vial of red liquid. So. Um, all right. As, um, as, as you guys burst onto the deck um, in various states of readiness, depending on your levels of, uh, of paranoia and such, before the air was calm and still, and there is a there's a strong wind that dies down as you as you guys step out onto it, and the sails are full, and all of the crew is awake and running around doing their jobs. Um, as, as you step out, you see a bright flare in the sky behind you that vanishes in the distance um, as the boat moves on its way. Um, um, excuse me to the nearest whomever is on deck. Um, there is a man adjusting a jack tar. Um, I only know what that is because I like shanties. You're being unfair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, sorry. <laughs> there is a person adjusting a knobby thing that rope goes around. <laughs> um, he goes, we're, we're underway. D- Damn Duke finally came through on his end of the deal. Oh, um, I, so the, the, the snap was intentional? Everything is all right? Land lovers. I... Gestures in the direction of the sails. Oh, oh. <laughs> I see. Um. I'm sorry to disturb you. I'll just, um, right. We were just worried because there was a great deal of, of mist swirling about the, um, window in the cabin that we're staying in, and that was a bit worrying, is all. Oh, oh, you're in the captain's cabin in the back. Yeah, the, the, the wake can do that as it closes and the gap left behind the ships. Don't, don't look at it too long. It, you can trick yourself into thinking that it's chasing us. And... Oh. Right. Right. Well, you, you all have a good night. You sure. Too. I'll try. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, all right. I guess I'm going to go back. I'm super going to sleep now. Yeah. All right. So you guys are awoken to the after a much more restful night than you would have had in the uh, in steerage with a much more restful lack of fatigue penalties. Um, Where you guys are awoken by the sound of a man shaving, and to your knowledge, shaving isn't supposed to make sound, but he appears to be bungling it. Are are you all right? Um, (laughs) Marlene does this for me, and they- Should you you like for me to give you a hand? Uh, Well, yes. He sits down in his chair and throws the strop over his shoulder. Uh, I guess Tavith makes his way over to him, and he, uh, I guess, like he, he draws the, uh, the, I guess, like the straight razor or whatever blade it is, uh, wipes it on his, uh, on his sleeve, readies a towel, and begins uh, helping the fellow shave. What luck that I should be on a boat with a barber. 
You know, this reminds me of the fourth time at that time. Oh, I um, realized the depth of Tavith's mistake. <laughs> good sir, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't anyway. talk while while getting a shave. It will interfere with the the closeness and quality. Hmm. Um, shows. Very well. And he he quiets down. Yes. <laughs> right. So um, the winner, the, the crew at that Revelation point, uh, knows a lot about shaving humanoids for someone who's famous. Um, so at that point, um, you guys are informed by the crew that you've arrived. Um, the as you as you step out onto the deck after gathering your things and your animals. This is a strange looking port. Like, none, none of you have seen ports, but you were to the knowledge, that many ports at least, but you were to the impression that this was an out of way island in the middle of nowhere. Certainly the maps that you could turn up just barely mentioned to this thing as a footnote. But the the harbor and you you find yourself looking because you were, you were expecting a, a boat to row you ashore, but there's a brand new harbor with rough cut lumber extending in a pier and it, it's a deep harbor the 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 buildings around appear to be made mostly of of raw lumber but they're they're stone in places um you get the impression that this was all built a week ago the the wood hasn't been weathered by the sun yet or it's all raw and still yellow huh. quick work it's uh it's like a like a festival that's just gone up overnight. But uh, yes. The stone. The, the stone buildings are fairly rare. Everything's mostly lumber. Um, but you see sort of a, it's almost like they're they're building a seawall, which is which is strange. Is, is there flooding in this area? I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm asking you. I'm sorry. I, I, none of you are, should feel compelled to answer that. I don't. Oh, well, good, I'm glad. I bet fancy. I'm, I'm so happy to have my uh, my mule. How is off the how boat. is the mule? By the way, is is he well? Is did he was he over worried much by his journey? Uh, well, I'm just well. I'm, I I I I think that uh, Fancy's all right. Um, Jeremy, I would like to uh, inspect. So the the mule <laughs> is acting inconvenienced. Um, he doesn't. You can he, listen. The mule's a professional, okay? He he understands that these sort of things are kind of par for the course for his job, but he just a boat, really. But he's 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 he he he's playing along. He's okay with it. He's he's certainly glad to be getting some free air. I I would just like to take a second and point out. So far this session, we have rolled to know what a boat is. To check on a mule. No, no. The roll was to notice you were becalmed. You rolled to know what a boat was. <laughs> no, I rolled. I rolled all. Uh, no, no. You know, I rolled a three. Yeah. All right. So three out of four of us rolled to know what a boat was, and two of us failed that. Uh, <laughs> hey, I didn't make anybody roll wisdom on uh, nature to figure out what the mule, uh, what the mood of the mule was. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate uh, that you're so welcome. much. That's a dumb roll. I'm Unless you have animal handling you can't know david so just you're gonna have to pick up that, that ability <laughs> I, I would only nature at a penalty but anyway um i digress <laughs> i'm sorry i didn't mean to derail i just i've loved <laughs> i've loved our roles so far this session i i i guess have it like pets the side of, of fancy's god damn it dylan main and then says it's all right darling well we're, we're we're exactly where we need to be and uh we uh i guess uh he looks over at the other uh, fellows on the boat uh well it was uh it was good to run into everyone on the boat uh you doctor you're quite keen it's good you solve that problem with the uh um the barrels and the and the copper business oh yes the um the water purification apparatus if you don't mind me asking, what exactly are you doing here in this place? Ah, well, I have heard a most peculiar uh, rumor uh, regarding a, uh, a contest of sorts, um, for which the prize is a title. And, uh, well, I have found myself uh, treated unjustly recently and uh, should like to seek to rectify that by uh, alternative means. Um, what are you a doctor of? Uh, me medicine. I'm a physician. So you're a mystical healer then? N n no, I'm I'm a, I'm a, a physician. I I understand medicine. Oh, Wait, you're medicine. a you're an apothecary. Yes, yes, I am an apothecary among make, other things. Make potions. I am capable of doing such a thing. Yes. 
but my practice is medicine. Get so just, the, just healing potions then? No, it's a sur- surgery and field dressing and triage and whatnot. Oh, uh, all right. Re- Revelation, I, I assure you the doctor's mystical ability is, is quite unmatched in the, uh, in the areas of healing. It's very, he's very, very good. He's, he's put me together on numerous occasions with That's... his skills and magics and whatnot with the sewing bits. Yes, yes, with the sewing bits, the sutures, which is primarily what I used when I was attending to you, uh, not magic. I would just note that. That's just not terribly important, I suppose, but it is true, so, yes. Um, right. I, I, Mailgar, w- 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 what are, why are you here, exactly? Point, she points at Revelation, because she's here. Ah, all right. Oh, so you do know each other. Mm-hmm. Yes, she... Um, she frequents a tavern that I've um, been to a few times. Hmm. She has the best stories. Well then, I uh, suppose then Revelation, your reason for being here would uh, put the puzzle pieces together for the both of you. Oh, I seek a comet under the sea. There's a woman um, ha- Heroics. Well, as a, a, a vision was granted. Um, I have uh, come here to seek out the truth of it. Ah, how fascinating. And what about you, Tavith? Aren't you a mercenary? Uh, yes. Well, uh, not exactly specifically a, a, what? A, a mercenary. I'm more of a, uh, uh, like a constable for hire. They can be hired by people. Are, are you a guard? Like one of those? Certainly, most certainly. No, I could like have sworn, though, that when you came to me, you told me that you had been wounded while doing mercenary work for a merchant caravan. I don't believe that was... I don't know if it was mercenary no, work. It was actually, like, he pulls out a notebook from his bag and starts, like, pawing <laughs> through it. Um, hmm, um, uh, let me just check my notes. Um, hmm, uh, uh, I don't think it's yes. important, Doctor. I don't think that there's, no one wants to hear about my, <laughs> my various unfortunate uh, uh, g- g- uh, comings and goings. Kevin, if I feel... Are you, are you uh, over warm again? You're sweating a bit. Uh, it's just a very warm dock. It's new, and there's obviously heat coming off of the water and the. There's a delightfully wood. refreshing sea breeze. <laughs> Fucking fuck that. He closes the book, tucks it away again, doesn't say anything else. Well, why are you here then, Tavith? Right. Uh, well, uh, I heard of uh, some contests that were, that were being held here, and uh, I have uh, come here to look into them. Oh. Uh, the same that I refer to, I presume. I mean, it, mu- it must be the same if I've, if I've heard, well, about it all the way from where I was, so. I cannot imagine that there would be another contest of any uh, international note to be taking place on this little nowhere island that is rather nicely appointed now at this point, but is nonetheless essentially in the middle of nowhere. I suppose we should find out more about this competition then. I agree. So as you um, the you guys are kind of thrown to the back of the crowd by a surge of people who are trying desperately to get out of that steerage hold. You know I will what? let them pass. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah I'm going to step aside as a gentleman and, and allow them. Um, luckily, nobody manages to fall off of the gangplank or the pier. Okay. There is just this press of humanity um, down the pier. And finally, finally, it clears up enough for you guys to step through, uh, aided by the fact that you have a large woman and a, and a mule to help break a crowd for you. And there is a sign towards the end of the pier that just says arrivals and has an arrow. Oh, I suppose um, that should. is where we should go. And then un- un- underneath it, there's, there's some other signs that say uh, staff and um, and logistics and point in a different direction. This is definitely a festival. Well, shall we see what uh, what what is uh, in operation at the arrivals area? I so suppose the no. it was built up the whole village overnight, or, or town, or city almost even. It's kind of shocking, but there's still about half again as many people as the streets uh, should be handling. And and we can find out what's there oh. next, next time. time. We can, we can find out what's there next time. Yeah.